Hello, everybody, and happy February. This month, we are beginning the Sacraments of Healing. Um, I, I'm i so happy with, with what you've submitted to me so far. I love seeing your little grace people and, and seeing um, all the progress that you're making with your kids. I think it's really uh, wonderful that you guys are doing this at home with your kids, and I think it's so valuable for them to see you interacting with them um, about their faith. So good job. Um, talking about the sacraments of healing. Uh, first of all, it's no surprise, it should come as no surprise to you, that we're broken people living in a broken world. Um, but God is not satisfied with this. This wasn't his original plan for it to be as chaotic as it is, both in our own lives and broadly. Um, and so he does give us means um, for healing, which is a really beautiful thing. Um, so one thing I did want to point out is there are a few different types of sin. I'm not sure if you're familiar with these. Venial sins are lesser sins that just sort of hurt our relationship with God a little bit. Um, think about like snapping at your spouse, right, when you're grumpy. Um, they don't completely break your relationship, but they're not good for it either, right? Um, and then mortal sins, these are serious sins that completely damage your relationship with God. And these are the ones that you need to be taking into confession. Any sin has to be, um, you have to know that you are doing something wrong and do it anyway. Um, there are uh, a couple other categories of sins as well. There are sins of uh, commission, which is when you do something that you shouldn't do. Um, and there are sins of omission, where you don't do something that you should have done. So um, just keep all those things um, in your mind. The Sacrament of Reconciliation. Um, so I'm sure that you um, have been before when you were young. Um, and it, it's a sacrament that I think um, we over, overlook, maybe. We don't um, frequent as much as we should. I think it's easy to forget that it's there. And I think that it's easy to um, sort of overlook our own faults and overlook um, the ways that we might be hurting others and hurting God. Um, I I want to encourage you to consider going to um, to confession. There are uh, open confession times every week at our church. We have at St. Malachy's. It's on Friday nights. I think it's from 6 to 7. Um, and on, at St. Margaret's, uh, it's on Saturday morning. Um, confession is a funny thing. It, it's not something you ever really want to go do, uh, because it's very uncomfortable. But, um, at least personally for me, I find that, uh, confession is a very freeing thing. Um, I think in our, in our overall faith lives, there, there aren't that many moments where, you stop and you're like, wow, I really feel God's presence right now. Like an overwhelming sense of him being there, at least for me, it's not that common. Right. Um, but I do find that in confession, this is a place that I frequently am overwhelmed by God's presence. And, and I think that that's a, a beautiful gift that he's given us. I, um, am a very emotional person. And so I think that like, uh, for me, um, I am often moved by Jesus in a way that, like, will make me cry or make me, like, very emotional. And that's, uh, I often find that in confession. Even if I don't have anything that serious to confess in confession, if I go, it's, I am often overwhelmed by just the, the gift of forgiveness that we're given and how unworthy I am and how beautiful it is that God is willing to um to forgive us even if we do something horrible even if you know it's something that I can't even look the priest in the eye and and say out loud you know it it um God's willing to forgive it all and that is an amazing gift that we don't take advantage of as much as we should right I was just teaching seventh and eighth graders and um, we were talking about different types of sins. And I was going through the venial and the, the um, mortal sins and, you know, how it affects our relationship with God. And one of them raised their hands and they were like, well, is there a way that we could 
like fix the relationship? <laughs> and I was like, well, actually, yes, God does give you the means to do that through confession. Um, and, you know, I just think that it's something we, we take for granted. We have our kids do it in second grade and then we don't go back. And, um, and we should. On a personal, like, betterment level, I think that, like I said, it's very easy to overlook our sins um, because nobody really likes thinking about all the ways that they stink, you know? But um, but if we don't ever think about the ways that we could improve, then we won't improve and we'll just continue stinking. <laughs> so I think that confession gives us an opportunity to sit down and think, um, you know, what are some areas where I really do need to work on being a better person and loving more fully? Um, and, and how can I, how can I improve, you know? And I think that if you, if you frequent confession, if you go somewhat regularly and you are sitting down to think about these things, then you'll, well, one, you'll receive the grace, you know, of God through confession, which will help you improve, but but you'll, you'll improve, you know, you'll get to be a better person. You'll be more aware of, of your struggles and how to work on them. So that's my little spiel on confession. Um, uh, a couple of little things just to point out. One, um, confession is not valid unless you are actually sorry for your sins. So you can't go in and be like, yeah, you know, I killed a guy, but he deserved it. Um, you have to be sorry in order to be forgiven. So if, if you did go into confession and the priest got the sense that you weren't really actually sorry, he might, you know, tell you to pray about it more and come back or something like that. Um, but of course, God's always there and willing to forgive as long as we actually want the forgiveness, right? Um, what else? Uh, the seal of confession. Um the priest cannot share your sins with anyone, even the police. He can't share anything that he hears in confession with anyone. Um, a funny story about this. When when um, Danny and I were expecting our first, Danny actually told the priest that we were expecting in the, um, in the confessional. And so when they left, the priest wanted to congratulate me, but I was not in the confessional with them. And the seal of the confessional was there. And so he like nudged Danny because he had to tell him again so that, so that the priest could talk about it. Um, so anyway, that, um, that's just there so that there's no reason why you can't ask for the forgiveness of God. Right. Um, which is the most important thing. Um, I think that's all I've got on confession. Um, Oh, just one other thing. I, I do have some priest friends and they um, they always say that there's this funny thing with confession where you just, they hear so many confessions and they hear so many sins that they, they don't really like remember them afterwards, which I th thought was very comforting to hear a priest say. It's like, yeah, you know, I hear a bunch of confessions, but I don't, they don't stick with me. Like I don't, see a person and think, oh yeah, that's the person who came and confessed adultery to me. Um, and so I think that's a comforting thing and probably a grace uh, that God gives priests to just sort of let the let the sins go through them and instead of sticking with them. Um, so I find that comforting because it's, um, it's embarrassing to go to confession. But as I said, it is worth it to receive the grace of God and the forgiveness. So, um, I encourage you, take your families to confession. That would be awesome. Um, and there, I mean, every church has confession times. And so if the times that we have at St. Veronica's don't work for you, you can find another um, another church that has it. Um, so that's that. I hope you have a great February. And thank you so much for your continued um, work on this. And I hope that we'll all be able to see each other soon. God bless. Bye-bye.